Welcome to the Merton Heritage Alphabet, an A to Z of our borough's colourful past. R in our alphabet stands for river, in this instance, the River Wandle. The river has been known by various names over the centuries. The first recorded reference was from a charter from 693 AD, referring to the Hlida Burnham, meaning fast flowing stream. By 1586, records were also describing the river as Vandalis, Wendell or Wandle, derived from what we now know as Wandsworth. The ready water supply and fertile rich soil surrounding the river made the Wandle Valley an ideal grazing area for a variety of animals. This included woolly mammoths whose bones and teeth have been found alongside other fossil remains in the gravels bordering the river. Plentiful game supplies in the area around the river attracted Stone Age hunters to this locality. These nomadic people are thought to have built temporary wooden structures along its site. The river encouraged settlement throughout parts of Merton the Roman road Stain Street, which went from Chichester to London, forded the Wandle near Phipps Bridge. Here the water supply and good transport links would have prompted the creation of trading posts along the route. Proximity to the river and the supply of water for washing, supporting crops and livestock is also likely to have influenced Anglo-Saxon communities to settle in Mitcham. And archaeologists have found a variety of burials and grave goods at a site off Morden Roan opposite Mitcham tram station. The medieval Merton Priory was founded on a large site next to the Wandle in 1117. Here water was used for washing, cooking, sanitation, mixing herbal medicines and also may have been used to help create pigments for illustrating medieval manuscripts. From the 16th to the 19th centuries, wealthy businessmen, bankers and politicians established fine homes in the picturesque riverside surroundings. Examples include Mitcham Grove, this elegant mansion stood on a site thought to have been occupied by a previous Tudor house, but the property shown here was redesigned by the famous designer Robert Adam for the eminent city financier Henry Hall. Also along the wander was this property, Morden Lodge. This was a vast structure created for the eminent Anglo-Dutch merchant and financier Abraham Goldschmidt. This was built around 1806 and is known to have been visited by leading members of Georgian society, including King George III and the Prince Regent. Also along the river in Collier's Wood, Wandle Bank House was the home of the leading journalist and editor James Perry, who also owned the adjoining Merton Flour Mill. This property is known to have been visited by Lord Nelson, who was a friend of Perry. Nelson and his friend Sir William Hamilton, a leading diplomat, are also thought to have fished in the Wandle. The Wandle itself was always described as one of the best trout fishing rivers in the country. During the 17th and 18th centuries, many famous angling enthusiasts are said to have fished for brown trout here, including Isaac Walton, the famous author of The Complete Angler. The river is fast flowing, partly due to the drop along its length, some 55 metres or 126 feet. The strength of the flow is one of the reasons why historically the river has been used to power a wide variety of industry. For its size, the Wandle was once one of the most heavily worked rivers in the world. At least 90 water mills were built at regular intervals along its banks. Their giant water wheels, turned by the flowing water, powered systems, gears and levers, driving machinery used to manufacture a wide range of goods. This included milling corn into flour, grinding tobacco leaves to make snuff, copper processing, paper production, and also the pounding of skins to create high quality leathers. The leatherworks here that you can see on the right hand side belong to the Connolly brothers, who famously provided leathers for the House of Commons, the House of Lords, the Royal Household, and also a variety of luxury car man manufacturers, including Rolls Royce. The Wandle is also strongly associated with the history of textile bleaching and printing. During the 17th century, French Protestants or Huguenots fled persecution in Europe and sought refuge in England. Many settled in areas such as Merton and Wandsworth, where their skills as dyers and printers proved highly beneficial. In Mitchum and Collier's Wood, the, the, their skilling work as calico bleach was also put to use, and print works were established, where lengths of fabric were bleached in the waters of the Wandle using alkaline substances made from wood ash and potassium hydroxide. 
This was then left to whiten in bleaching grounds along the river's length and the resulting fabrics were highly prized, helping to secure the fortunes of various Huguenot manufacturers such as Peter Moverlane, whose print works at Merton and Wandle, Wandsworth employed over a thousand workers. In the 19th century, the Wandle also attracted some of the giants of the arts and crafts movement, including the designer William Morris, who opened a craft works off Merton High Street in 1881. This produced natural dyes, hand-printed fabrics, stained glass, carpets and tapestries until 1940. Slightly further downriver, from 1904, Arthur Liberty purchased Edmund Little as Merton Abbey silk printing works, and the Liberty Print Works continued to produce high quality printed silks for the famous Regent Street store until the 1970s. Part of the complex now survives as the popular Merton Abbey Mills craft market. By the 1970s, industrial pollution had turned the Waddle into an open sewer with a catastrophic catastrophic impact on wildlife. However, in recent years, improved river management, legislative powers and regular cleanups have reversed much of this damage, benefiting wildlife and the visiting public. The river now attracts an amazing range of birds from herons and kingfishers to little egrets, wagtails, waterfowl and owls. These birds are a good indicator of river quality as they will only feed and rest near clean water with a good food supply, including fish, insects, mollusks, mollusks and amphibians such as frogs and newts. The Wandle is now home to common frogs, smooth newts and even the endangered great crested newt. Fish stocks include trout, chub, roach, dace, eels and carp. Although the most common mammal along the Wandle is now the brown rat, there have been various attempts to reintroduce the endangered water vole to the river, starting from 2001 from the London Water Vole Trust, and it's hoped that this little mammal will continue to thrive in the local area. If you would like to know more about Merton's heritage, visit our Merton Memories website at www.merton.gov.uk forward slash memories. You can also find more information at Merton Heritage and Local Studies Centre, which is based on the second floor of Morden Library.